And um, welcome to the first practice back. Today we might need um, a strap in case arms can't properly reach behind the back to catch the foot, for example. And um, you might, as usual, have a block ready. So if you don't have a block, you might know already books and uh, thicker cushions are great to have. If you don't have a strap, uh, you could use a shawl, um, a towel or something else, but you might not even require this uh, piece here. So we will begin today lying flat down on the tummy. If you don't mind, come on to the front of your body, bring your hands out in front, and you might um, enjoy stacking the hands here and then resting the forehead down. Once you have placed yourself in this way, I don't think this is your very final position. You might enjoy here to explore bringing your legs out wide and pointing the toes out and away from you so um, that your base is wide open. Sometimes this feels right and sometimes we're not quite that solid on the ground. In that case, you could do the opposite and touch uh, the toes together and then let the heels of the feet roll outward. So choosing between the two and a suggestion to try them both to see which one works best. When you found the right positioning for your legs, you might enjoy a little wiggle through the pelvis, just carefully exploring how is the pelvic area feeling and how does that little movement of work for your legs. Once that feels good, you might enjoy just sliding your elbows out a tad bit further and maybe bringing a very soft and gentle movement into the shoulders. I'm hoping that that allows you to feel more at ease around your upper back shoulders and your arms. Because really, it is just the hands that are carrying the weight of your heavy head. But arms and shoulders ideally aren't weight bearing much at all. They're more relaxed. This is Makrasana or the crocodile. I thought this is a beautiful way to restart our practice, to get that sense of being deeply connected down into the ground, feeling safe, and whatever is currently going on in your life, you could just drop that down towards the earth, allowing yourself to be. Once you're feeling in the physical body, a sense of relaxation, you might allow to turn your awareness then to your breath. And I know that once the word breath is mentioned, we're already changing it slightly. You might like to explore the possibility of letting your breath travel softly towards your abdomen on which you are lying. So when the breast travels there, you might feel on the sides of the body an expansion and a release. If you were to deepen the breast down into your abdomen, that motion on the side of the body will increase. And you might also feel a movement around the back body. While your tummy is now potentially pushing down into the mat and then retreating back inwards. Taking a few breaths that just go down around your abdominal and lower back area sides of the waist for a few more rounds. Connecting to the deep diaphragmatic breath that pushes the belly side of the waist and outwards.
for the moment then, relaxing the breath once more, sort of a neutral, natural way of breathing gently. Maybe you notice something around the lower part of your torso. You could then explore what it feels like to use the breath into your rib cage. As you breathe more towards the rib cage, think about the expansion happening into the mat, out to the sides of the lower ribs, and towards your mid back. The movement in the mid back when we're lying down on the front of the body might feel a little bit stronger than when we're seated or the body is free. So exploring a breath that opens the lower parts of the ribs, maybe moves a little bit down into the mat at the same time. Then pausing this breath and letting your breath gently flow. We will come from exploring abdominal breathing, ribcage breathing, to full yogi breath if it works for you. Please do not ever strain or stress your breathing. It's just an exploration. It's your depth and your length. If it feels right for you, now breathe in towards the abdominal area, then take the breath further to your lower ribs, and then direct the breath all the way up towards collarbones and upper back. And you might even pause the breath at the end of your inhalation for however long or short this feels right. You could then empty the lungs right from the top down to the bottom. And the last thing that retreats is again your abdominal area. So my suggestion, full yogi breath from the belly to the lower ribs towards the collarbones an optional hold of the breath then, and an out breath that moves downwards to empty the breath. So kind of reverse exhalation. While you might explore that in your own pace and time, I will share with you the poem that came up in the card for today, which is chosen from the Rumi Oracle. It is the card of the blood angel. In the midst of the darkness, a moon appeared with its brilliance. Stepping down from the clouds, it glanced at me. Like a falcon that hunts a bird and steals it away, it captured me and flew back to infinite space. As I looked for myself, I could not find me, for my body had become all soul and the tenderness of love. The nine spheres of heaven dissolved in that moon as the ship of my existence drowned in the sea of love. We might go a little bit deeper into the meaning of this poem towards the end of our practice. While you might take another couple of deep, full yogi breaths.
Once you completed those breaths, please rest again, finding a gentle way of breathing. And then placing your legs back to a comfortable hip distance, wherever they were placed like, wide or closed. You might then slide your hands back and place them next to your shoulders or lower ribs. And on the next inhalations, just grounding through the tops of the feet and gently lifting the head and the chest for a baby cobra. On the out breaths, release the forehead back down. We'll repeat that twice more. So for the inhalation, mini wave and a lift of the upper body. And an out breath to release back down. One more. Once you've completed these rounds, push the floor away as you take your next inhalation and arise onto all fours. Suggestion as a counter posture to step the knees in a little. You may keep them at hip distance or you may open your knees out and touch your big toes together. As you could choose to sit your buttocks back towards your heels. Now, if you are a big fan of bolster and you have one at home, you might embrace the bolster. If you find uh, to place the head onto the mat is a little bit too low, you could stack your fists or you could use your block in front. Do this similar movement that you might have had in the crocodile and just allowing your hips to sway for a while from side to side. Maybe you're noticing sensations here. Checking in with yourself. As we acknowledge further the physical body and potential manifestations of emotions and feelings. Once you are quite sure around the lower part of the body, you could choose to move into the shoulders for a while, allowing your upper body to move. Once you've explored that enough, you might allow your head to roll from side to side while kind of keeping the forehead on the ground or on your support. So that the head is held and the movement of the neck free of any weight bearing. If you find that one side or maybe even both are a little bit tight today, rest on the one side and draw back the shoulder that you're leaning towards actively. So to increase the length in that side of the neck. If it was on both sides, relax the shoulder again and turn the head to the other side and then move this shoulder that you're turning towards as far away from the ear as you can creating more space or a light stretch in the side of the neck. Then release and come into center. Maybe returning back to your full yogic breathing, maybe even adding the Ujjayi technique, the light constriction in the back of the throat that creates the oceanic sound. As we prepare to move the body into a different position from Balasana or child's pose, either removing any props in front of you or directly stepping the hands down onto the mat and then very carefully lifting the upper body to come into a seated position. Bringing the knees to about hip distance apart and placing the hands down for an all four stands 
or Vidalasana cat and cow pose. You might spread your hands out wide onto the mat. If there's any wrist issues, you might prefer to step up onto fists. Take a look back at your knees, other place underneath your hips. We will practice a few rounds of Bidalasana or Cat and Cow. For the inhalation, soften your elbows a little, lift your tail, open your chest and look up. For the outbreaths, do the opposite and deeply round into the cat. The inhalation, soft elbows, tail and gaze lifting. Outbreaths, rounding the spine. Now keep that flowing. What you might like to try is a big breath out of the mouth. <laughs> like the hissing of a cat. Bringing in the bonus of clearing a little bit through the throat area. Go for two more breaths. And once you complete it, return back to a neutral spine. Bring movement towards the side body now by lifting the left foot and shin, but the knee stays on the mat. As you then inhale, swing your foot towards the left and take a look. And as you brace out, swing the foot across the body and have another look. And then make that into continuous movement. Doesn't have to be very far, but just moving into the side body. If the knee on the ground is not good for your body, lift it off the mat and do the same movement here. Last round. Then center the upper body and place the foot back down onto the ground. We'll continue straight away with the other side. So maybe now right foot and shin lift off the floor, knee is grounded. And as you inhale, swing the foot to the right to look at it. And with the exhale, swing it to the left and look at it. And then keep that going, inhaling right, exhaling across the body. As you swing, the gaze is moving, sides of the waist are moving, and we're bringing side bends into the spine. Once you completed your next round, please land the foot again onto the mat. Then return your buttocks towards the heels with an out breath into an extended child's pose before walking or sliding the hands back in towards your body and coming into a seated position. Now for the seated pose as usual, you can choose to just remain here seated on the heels. I've already brought my block along. This is not for everybody's knees. If you find there's too much pressure, please bring your legs out in front instead and you can sit in an easy pose. But you could also do what I am doing and place a block here behind you, no matter where the legs are in front or tucked in. Today we will use Soya Mudra, the mudra for the sun. Um, not coincidentally, but as often happens, the card kind of feeds um, my plans. So let's fold the ring fingers into the palms of the hands. I will bring them up towards the screen and then place the thumb on top of the ring finger. So it's reasonably simple, doesn't mean it's easy but there's only two fingers involved. 
So ring finger in and thumb on top to hold the ring finger into place. You can place the mudra down into your lap or onto your thighs, knees. Shrug the shoulders back a little. Ground through your sitting bones as you lean a tad bit further back towards your tailbone. And you might even choose to close your eyes. Take time to let the sensations unfold that might come from your hands. This mudra here can assist us with digestive issues. It also encourages the energy into the body or this particular part of the body. It brings radiance to mind and body. It allows us to increase our self-esteem. It also allows us to digest life experiences, to clarify our life purpose. Which is what the card is about. So digesting our experiences, whether they're pleasant or unpleasant, and clarifying our life's purpose. If any of that, or the simple increase of energy, self-esteem, and better digestion resonate with you, you might enjoy joining in chanting the sound Ram for a few times. I suggest we do that in combination with the sound Om, the sound of the universe. So it will be short Om Ram that we will chant for a few rounds. We will make it seven. So let's breathe in for the first. Om Ram Om Ram Om Ram Om Ram Om Maybe you notice shifts in energies or highlightened energies. Maybe you don't. But potentially you can trust that these energies are working within your body anyway. Let's gently release the mudra and you might choose to wiggle your fingers, move through your wrists and hands. And no matter your seated position, if you are seated in a cross-legged, maybe changing the leg in front. And if not, let's drop the arms down by the sides. Taking a breath just to lift the arms a little bit away from the body. And out breath to turn to the right. And inhale to center. And then exhale to turn to the left. So you might choose to continue that. In breath is your center and out breath is a light twist. As we begin to go deeper into the twists of the spine, we're keeping them flowing and moving. If after a while it appears to be easy to maybe hold on to a knee here at the front, 
or even reach further across, you could do so. When you're next in balance, center yourself and allow your fingertips to touch the floor again. Reaching your right arm up with a deep breath in. And with the exhalation now coming into a side bend. We will hold the side bend. As you lean towards your left arm, please soften into it. And you might add a little bounce here. So we're keeping things moving, creating more energy in the body and potentially feeling a little bit warmer as well. Just a bounce and a deeper reach across. Pause at the end of your next out breath. And we release by rolling arm, shoulder, upper body forward, swinging the arm back to rest by your side, and then curling up to sit, an optional shoulder shrug back. Lifting the left arm up on the in-breath and leaning into the side bend, breathing out. The same here as you lean now into the right arm, soften through that arm, and you might then add a little bounce. Your arm can reach and stretch into the direction as we increase the space in our side body. Again, uh, pause. And to release, rolling your arm and shoulder down, placing hands either side, uncurling the spine and an optional lift of the shoulders and a shrug back to turn the palms of the hands forward. We will now move on into a sun salutation. So I will remove the block from the mat for now. Also, I will remove the socks. And we will meet again standing at the front end of the mat. Turning your body towards the short side of the mat, you might have your feet at a comfortable hip distance apart. For now, I will face you so you can see me better. With your arms down by your sides, we will take a deep breath and just reach the arms all the way up as if we draw a huge sun around us. But bringing the knees to a soft bend as you draw the arms down the midline on your out breath. On the next inhalation, then lengthening your spine forward into a half lift. On the out breath now, stepping your right foot down the mat. Placing the knee down onto the floor if that feels good, maybe even untucking the toes. Minding that the front knee is positioned above the ankle joint if possible. Placing your left hand into the side of the waist. And as you inhale, starting to turn towards your knee. Your gaze can move towards that side if the neck allows you to, or the chin could tuck in towards the shoulder looking up. If it feels right, you might even extend your left arm towards the ceiling. You could then experiment with coming up onto your fingertips on the right side. Maybe that gives the upper body a lift. You could even take the hand off the ground, place the forearm to the thigh and lift yourself even further. We're still within a twist, no matter the choices that you have made. If your arm is extended, swing it back down, releasing both hands, framing the front foot. Then step the left knee back to join the right. And place your hands further forward. With the next in-breath, then create a wave of the spine to come into a kneeling plank position. Actively draw the tailbone towards your heels. 
And with the out breath, keep your elbows close and slowly lower down onto the front of your body. You may keep your hands just where they are, but bending your right knee, bringing a strong flexion there into the right foot. As you gently lift your head and chest, breathe in. As you breathe out, lifting slightly the knee of the right leg off the ground, holding a gentle cobra and maybe the parts of the right thigh are lifted. Then release the forehead down and right leg extended down to the floor. You will then take a breath in if that's right and lift back to the gentle cobra. Now bending your left knee if that works and if so, flexing the left foot strongly. While you're holding a light cobra, you might lift or try to lift the left knee and parts of the left thigh of the floor. Pause. And then release forehead and extended left leg to the ground. Anything from here is still only extensions and options. So please feel free to step back to the first version of a gentle cobra. You might now breathe in for lifting into a gentle cobra, but you could choose to bend both of your knees and flex both of the feet. Pushing down the pubic bone into the mat, you might even pretend to lift your knees off the ground. Releasing your legs first and then your upper body. With your next inhale, pushing back up onto hands and knees, we will take a counter pose, extended child's pose. Knees can be wide or close as you move your buttocks back to the heels. Heads may rest or float with the gaze downwards. Option to move your pelvis from side to side. Extending the arms back actively towards the front side of the mat. On the inhalation, come onto hands and knees. You can stay here or tuck your toes under and breathe out for a downward facing dog. We won't hold the down dog here. We'll start to pedal into the legs and then begin with tiny steps to bring the feet forward to the front side of the mat and bowing down here into a standing forward bend. With the next inhale, lifting up for a half lift and extending your spine forward. With the out-breath, soften the knees and bend back down. Waiting for your exhalation to slowly uncurl the spine into a standing position. Lifting the arms back out as if you're drawing the sun around you as you breathe in. And drawing the hands back down the midline as you slowly fold forward again, returning to the forward bend. With the next in-breath, Half lift. On the out breath, stepping the left foot far down the mat and maybe grounding the knee to the floor. You might untuck the toes behind you and check that the knee is placed on top of your ankle joint. From here, there's the option of placing the right hand into the side of the waist and starting as you breathe in to turn towards your front knee. Option also to extend the right arm. Minding your gaze, you can just look into the open space or have your chin tucked in towards the shoulder. Further options, lifting up onto the fingertips of your left hand, moving further away from the floor, maybe deeper extending through the chest. And last option within this twist is to remove the fingertips from the ground and place the forearm on top of the thigh. A 
if your arm is extended, please swing it back and down, framing the front foot with your hands. Take your right knee and place it next to your left. The same here, you can step your hands further forward and then waving into a kneeling plank. Some of you might prefer tucking toes under and practicing a full plank position. Your choice. With the hour press again, keep your elbows by your side and lower pelvis, belly, chest, forehead to the mat. This time we come away from the cobra and extending our arms alongside the body. You have the choice here to rest on the forehead or bring the chin down to the ground. Please check in with your neck for this decision. With the next breath in, we will aim to lift both legs, head, chest, and maybe the arms. Version Shalabhasana. On the next out breath, release that. You might use your strap for this if your arms are a bit short, as you could choose to bend your right knee. If you can comfortably take the outer side of the foot, or your ankle, please do so. The left arm can stay by the side of the body. As you breathe in, push the foot into the hand, lifting your head and chest, and maybe the knee on the right hand side is lightly coming off the floor. On the next out breath, let all of that go and rest back down under the front of the body. Option now to change sides, bending the left knee. If you can reach, take a hold of the foot. Some of you might bring the strap around. For the inhalation, take a lift, head to chest, and maybe the foot is moving back into the hand. Then release again. Arms by the sides, head resting, legs long. The very last option for this backbend is the Nuasana or bow pose. If it is suitable, please bend both of your knees. If your hands easily can catch outer sides of the feet or your ankles, you may do so. If they don't, leave the arms long by the sides and flex your feet. We'll take a breath in, either bringing the feet into the hands and lifting the body, or we're just lifting the body. One more breath. And then relax the body back down. You can have a little wiggle here through the body if that feels right. And then bringing the hands back down underneath your shoulders. On the in breath, find all fours and choose another extended child's pose as you sit the buttocks to the heels. Movement is always welcome, as you might know. Extending your arms back out towards the front. Let's inhale to come onto hands and knees. If you stay here, please bring knees under hips or tuck toes under and breathe out for a downward dog. We'll do the same here. We'll start paddling into the legs and then walking the feet towards the front side of the mat. On the inhale, creating a half lift here. For the out breath, folding forward. Waiting for your next exhalation to uncurl the spine into a standing position and drawing a sun around you as you take your in breath. On the exhale, release the sun, the arms moving again by your sides. Give the shoulders another shrug and if it felt right, fold the ring finger into the palm of the hand for Surya Mudra, touching thumbs on top. As we stand here at about hip distance apart, 
Leaning the weight towards your left foot. Take a breath in and lift the right heel or knee. Then step the foot back and out to the side, landing the foot in a deep angle as you bend your front knee for a warrior one stance. The feet might gently draw in towards each other. While you could choose to keep the mudra at your hands, take a breath in to lift the sun up. Maybe your gaze is coming up as if you could imagine holding the sun here in your hands. Warrior one. With your next in-breath, lift the back heel off the floor. Release the arms down by the sides and releasing your mudra as well. As you lean the weight back to the left foot, lift the right foot and bring your knees to back together. Here's again the option of using a strap around your foot, or if it's within reach, you might take the foot into your hands, bringing knees back together and steadying your gaze somewhere away from the screen at a solid spot. For your left hand, you could bring the Surya Mudra back in. On the inhale, move the foot into your hand or the knee up behind you. You might raise the arm and lift right from your solar plexus and your chest. Natarashasana dancer pose. Inhale and span, open even more, or have a dance. And as you breathe out, releasing the shape. Some faster, some slower. As we come back to stand at the front side of our mat, we'll draw the sun around us once more, breathing in. And breathing out. We will change sides, shifting weight lightly to the right side and bringing Surya Mudra into both of the hands. Maybe lifting the left heel or the left knee is coming up. And then stepping the foot back and out to the side, grounding it down in an angle and bending into the front knee. There could be a gentle pull of the feet inwards. And a breath in here to raise the arms up over the head. Maybe looking back up at the sun or looking out in front of you, depending how your knee, uh, neck is feeling and the shoulders. Back to warrior one with a strong focus and self-esteem. With your next in breath, Push the back heel off the floor. With the out breath, release your arms by your sides and lift the back foot off the ground by bending the knee. You might release the mudras for a moment and aim to reach for the foot behind you. It's not important if you can touch there. Bringing knees back together. Your Surya Mudra could remain or come back into your right hand. And while you breathe in, bringing the knee behind you, the foot into the hand and lifting the right arm. I recommend a really steady gazing point here. So rather than looking at what we are doing on the screen, find steadiness and allow the solar plexus to lift and open, same as your heart space. Breathing in. And as you breathe out, releasing arm and stepping foot back down to the ground. Shuffle a little bit from side to side. And if your mat is squared like mine, you might just open your legs out a bit wider. We align the toes first to the corners of the mat. Taking a breath in to draw the sun around us only to interlace the hands for Charlie's Angels Mudra, index finger pointing up. Let's breathe out and chop the wood. Ha! Inhale, that was very soft. 
exhale. Ha! <laughs> now lifting up. Ha! Go for another two. Ha! Ha! And then once more, lifting up, turning your heels outward and gently letting the sun set as you release your arms by your sides. Outer edges of the feet are now parallel. We'll take a breath in, lifting from the sternum and your gaze. Then soften the knees and raise out, come to a wide-legged forward fold. Hands can slide down the legs or rest in front or on a block if you wish. Folding all the way down as far as your body allows you. Please keep the head up if you've got sensations of pressure issues or dizziness. Hands can be resting underneath the shoulders and you might gently lift the shoulders into their sockets. As you rest here, bending forward, let the majority of the weight sit in the balls of the feet while the heels still stay grounded on the mat. Lengthening your out breath now. With your next breath in, come to your fingertips and lift your upper body lightly. Bring a bend into your knees and you might step your knees down onto the mat. Please bring a block along, maybe even the strap if you've got it. As I'm still feeling lightly dizzy, I will place a light cushioning underneath my head Please feel free to do that, but only if your neck is okay with it. So rather stay lying on the floor for now, but the blanket here might help you for the posture. So let's place the block down behind us. So the short end is facing you. Sitting in front of this block, I prefer mine flat because we'll add a little movement here. And as you take um, your fingertips to the block, when you lie over it, the short edge of the block is roughly about at the bra line, so that the block in the end is right between the shoulder blades. When you lie back, you can have your fingers on the block to place it this way. And if the head falling back is just not right, you can use a second block or you may use a blanket. As you let your arms fall down either side of your body, if the block is placed correctly, there's not really a sensation of pressure around your back and your shoulder blades are kind of hugging the block in. You might choose to stay here or you might choose, and there's not enough space here for me, but you would hopefully have that space. Circling the arms around you softly and on the elbows, bringing them back by the sides. By softly, I mean keeping your elbows soft so that your shoulder blades are massaging along the block. There's no need to strain or stress into the movement. It's really a soft movement. Your arms can be on the floor unlike mine and your elbows are soft. You might do that movement a few more times, just feeling your shoulder blades brushing along the block. If that feels good, you may continue, or you might choose after a while to rest. If you are still moving, I suggest to find a rest now as well. As I didn't cue what to do with the legs and kept my knees bent, you might have ended up in the same way. It's quite supportive for the lower back. But if in the resting position you would prefer to extend the legs out, 
do so and touch them together, actively pointing the toes away from you, completing a fish posture. Or Matsyasana. Take a few breaths here, deep from your belly up all the way to fill your lungs and back out. Maybe keeping the breath reversed today from the top down to the bottom. And you could imagine how easily the water flows just like your breath around the shape of this fish. Just like when we're strong within, it seems like life is flowing more effortlessly. When you completed your next breath, relax your legs. If they are straight, step the feet back down. If you had them bent, move the feet a little bit away from you. Take the palms of your hands down onto the mat underneath each side of your buttocks. Tuck then the elbows into your sides. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, begin to tuck the chin into the throat. Push down into the forearms and lift yourself into a seated position. Only to remove your block and lie back down onto the ground. If you like to practice support it, take the block into your free hand, set your feet down at hip distance, and start to squeeze your bottom as you take a breath out to push the hips up toward the ceiling. You could then slide the block under flat or even halfway up, but please place the block onto the very lowest part of your spine, more around your buttocks than your back. You can keep a hold of the block as you lift both feet, maybe extending the legs toward the ceiling, maybe even bringing them in a little. So if you find this position, yeah, it's nice, but I don't feel supported enough, and you have a strap nearby, bring the strap up around maybe your calves. You can hold with one side onto the block and draw the legs more over the body here. This is a take on the plow pose but in a supported form. So you might at the same time feel a bit extension coming through the backs of your legs. It's also an inversion. If you have chosen to use the strap like myself, please release the strap. You might place that away from the mat. Then bend your knees gently towards your chest and place your feet back down one after the other about hip distance apart onto the mat. Relax the arms for now as you might choose to hold the bridge supported. Then squeeze your bottom again as you raise your hips up, removing the block from underneath and taking your time to roll your spine back onto the floor. Opening the arms gently and allowing your knees to roll from side to side very softly at first. We've done twists, so if that feels good, you could even lift your knees off the floor and go a little bit deeper. You might also choose to bring the head in and roll that from side to side as well. Once you've found an inner balance there physically, 
you might choose to come into relaxation pose. Where your knees could be bent, the feet wide and the knees falling in. Or you could extend your legs out long. You can even then choose to close the eyes when you're ready. Letting your arms fall away from the body. But if you enjoyed the mudra, you could come back to Surya Mudra, ring finger folding into the palm and the right, uh, the thumbs on top, with the arms remaining open to either side of your body. as you might have set a quiet intention for your practice already, you could now reinforce by silently repeating an intention towards you. Be that I am healthy, I am happy, as a simple example. As you choose to rest, and if the mudra is within your hands, you might feel the breath naturally moving towards your upper abdominal area or the solar plexus itself. Keeping your breath gently, but potentially allowing your mind to focus on the breath. While I repeat the poem. In the midst of the darkness, a moon appeared with its brilliance. Stepping down from the clouds, it glanced at me. Like a falcon that hunts a bird and steals it away, it captured me and flew back to infinite space. As I looked for myself, I could not find me, for my body had become all soul in the tenderness of love. The nine seers of heaven dissolved in that moon as the ship of my existence drowned in the sea of love. Lada Angel by Rumi. In the explanation, of this card of the blood angel, it says, it comes to you with a particular message. You are being given the gift of more life. You may experience this more life as growth, expansion, more energy, more life force, or divine electricity circulating through your system. The blood angel understands that in the gift of greater life, which enables a soul to live more of its essence, becoming a more palpable divine presence upon this earth. There are many unavoidable experiences. One of these is that there will be more sunsets to counter the increase in your sunrises. This is about balance. When opening up to receive more, one needs to empty out what has been to allow for a new influx of energy. 
It is not about an exchange of equal measures. For you will receive according to the great generosity of life itself. If this card, poem, and words resonate with you, you might silently say after me, Blood Angel of unconditional life and divine love, bless me with the life force I need to attain my divine destiny. I open to your grace with perfect trust and perfect love. So be it. With your eyes closed, now notice your breath. Imagine or intend that you can sense the blood moving in your veins. So much life abounds in your body soul. Right now, release the focus on the breath. Let go of the gesture or mutra in your hands. And while you might deepen the breath now, you could add some movement, wiggles, stretches through the body. And when you're ready, you might like to join me again in a seated position. If it's right for you, take a deep breath and reach your arms out and up for one more sun to draw around. And then bring the hands down into heart center with Anjali Mudra. Thumbs might lightly attach towards the sternum, your eye gaze steady or the eyes closed. We'll finish our practice with once Om Ram. Let's inhale for that. Om Ram. As we stand in our own power, Gently extend with a bow to each other. Namaste.